Hey everyone, welcome to Lead Code Weekly Contest 319. Um, it's been a while since I've been I'm busy with exams, but I'm mostly back now. Like the face of his eyes, K. Mm, I want to in square tailies. One zero. For int j equals two. If pounder. to be bug. Oh, the stream minus minus. Four two, what is that? Yeah, this is a disaster. What am I doing? I'm very rusty because I have not done this for a while. Zero. Is any two nodes swap their values?
wood. Okay, this is the only one left. Okay, this one seems a bit hard actually. Um, so what do I need to do? Three three zero. AC, 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 AC. Okay. Phew, lucky I, I didn't get any wrong answers, but that wasn't very fast, so I don't actually know if that was fast enough. Um, I don't know because the leaderboard takes a while to update. Oh wait, no, this this guy did beat me by seven seconds. Which is annoying, which means I'll probably not um 
I'll probably lose some rating, but that's alright. Anyway, let's go through the solutions. This problem is, I'm not going to focus on this one. This one's just implement these formulas. Um, this problem is, you can brute force all subarrays. So, I each subarray is defined by its left and right positions, and I'm going to iterate over all subarrays, grouping them by their left position. So, I'm going to find all subarrays with the left position at the first element, then all subarrays with the first position at the right element. And that's what I'm doing here. Here, I is the I is the left index of the subarray, and current is the current LCM of the subarray. <coughs> then I loop through all right endpoints of the subarray, and every time I increase the subarray by adding one element to the right, I will update current to be the LCM of the current subarray, and this is just um, this is just equal to LCM of current and numbers j because the LCM of two numbers is their products divided by their GCD. And then if this current LCM is equal to K, I'll increment the answer by one, and then I'll return the answer. Uh, I'm a bit upset because I think I could have done way better, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit upset anyway. Um, this question is very well known, I think but it's not so easy to come up with. I think if you consider each each sub, each sub level individually, we're basically solving this problem for each level individually and adding all the answers. So the first thing to do is to separate the tree into different levels. The way I separate the tree into levels is with, you can use a BFS, <coughs> for example. Um, in my implementation, I just have L, which stores the current um, the current nodes in each level. Then once I've done processing the current, the current, um, the current level of nodes, for each of those nodes, I will append its children into the next level, and then I'll process the next level. So that's how I'm doing this. So basically, when we're solving for each question, it, the question is just like, how many swaps does it take to sort a list? So if I have a list of things like six three four five how many swaps will it take in order for me to turn this list uh, into its sorted version um this is a very famous problem and basically the idea is if you were to get its sorted list and the original list and if you were to add an edge between um for, for each like if i add an edge between nodes six and nodes three an edge between nodes three and nodes four in, in a graph, um, then the total number of moves is, if you take each component size and subtract one and add them all up, um, then that's the answer. Okay, I think, so let's say, for example, that we have one, two, three, and we need to turn it into two, three, one. The reason this works is because in our graph, if we follow this method, we will have the edges 1 and 2, 2 and 3, and 1 and 3. And the idea is, if you have this component of n things which all depend on each other, it will take exactly n take 1 swaps to make them all in the right position. And I think the easiest way is just to reason about this by trying different cases by hand. But you see that if you do n take 1 swaps, then the last swap uh, will be unnecessary. It always takes n take 1 swaps. But for example, if like if it was like this, we would have um, the edges one and two, two and one, and also three and three. So this component will have size two, so it contributes one towards the total, meaning it takes one swap to get the one and two in the correct spots. And then since the three and three has a component of size one, that takes zero moves. It takes zero swaps to get this component. I think this is very well known, so if you don't know this idea, I would Google it. I'm not sure how well I can explain it. But anyway, that's this problem. Finally, for this problem, is I think this is easier than Q3. The idea is, first of all, I, I use C++ because I was scared about the time limit. First of all, we need an array, like P, in my implementation, Px equals 
is the subarray from x to y palindromic. This is very famous, and you can just do this with standard DP. A subarray is palindromic if, um, if it's of size 1, if it's of size 2 and the elements are equal, and otherwise if the first and last elements are equal and then the middle bit is also palindromic. Then all I have now is dpx equals to maximum number of substrings if we only consider the string from index x onwards. Right, for example, dp2 would be the maximum number of substrings in this substring. And the transitions are pretty simple. Either we don't take the x character, in which case the answer is dpi plus 1, or we do take this character and i is um, the start of a palindromic substring that we do take. We iterate over through all possible j's um, for the palindromic substring. And if the palindromic is substring is if the substring is palindromic, we'll update our answer by taking the max of it and dpj plus one plus one because dpj plus one will be the remaining part of the substring after we take our palindromic substring and then we add one. And here I do i plus k take one because that ensures that the length is at least k. And that's it. The time complexity is n squared. Anyway, let's look how bad that was. Yeah, I only ended up with second place, a narrow second place. However, I am happy to get the gaming mouse because this gaming mouse is actually very nice. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I'm probably going to lose rating from this because um, my rating is quite is quite high. So I think I'll be losing rating or maybe it might be very, very negligible rating change. In any case, that's all I have. Um, thanks for watching.